So could Earth actually be purgatory? And if so, why are you here? What did you do to deserve this fate? But in all seriousness, that's what we're talking about today. Is Earth purgatory? And there is a lot of ideas surrounding this when it comes to ancient occult esoteric ideas, as well as Catholicism and modern theories in New Age and spirituality. We see ideas like this in ancient Gnosticism having to do with Gnosis and acquiring knowledge. Uh, we also see this in Catholicism that looks at purgatory as being a place that one goes to before one goes to heaven as a sort of spiritual purifying session. And then those uh, Catholicism doesn't look at Earth as being purgatory, though. I want to want to point that out. And then New Age has a lot of different ideas on Earth being purgatory. Is it possible that we have made some kind of transgression in a past life, perhaps on another planet, and we're sent here to go through a purification, a soul purification process? There's a lot to unpack here, and we're going to be taking a look at this and answering the question, is Earth actually purgatory? And this is a very important question to answer, because how you view Earth will change how you live your life and how you look at Earth. For example, if you believe that Earth is hell, well, then what are you going to want to do? You're going to want to escape. If you believe that Earth is hell, you're going to want to escape. And what are you not really going to be worried about? You're not going to be really worried about creating a better Earth because that, if you believe Earth is hell, you don't want to create, you don't want to put any time in trying to make hell better. It's hell. So we're needing to understand that having the proper consciousness and mindset about where we are, what we are, and why we are here has a very real effect on our lives and our collective destiny. So once again, as always, this topic today, is Earth actually purgatory? Why are you here? This isn't just for entertainment. It is information that is critical for progressing your life and our collective life together as Neogenians. So we're going to get started right away. But as always, please hit like and subscribe. Like I just said, this isn't just about entertainment. It's about getting information out there, raising consciousness. And when you hit like and subscribe, it just takes a second. But it tells the algorithm to spread this information around and it helps more people see it. So please do right now. Go ahead. Also, on that note, I want to remind you all we're having a members only video after this. It's going to be really good. We're talking about science's blind spot. And if you want to see my channel grow, help me create bigger and better videos, help me reach more people, support over on patreon.com slash morgue official. And you get access to all of our members only videos. There's a new one every single week. There's a lot. They're really good. And you'll be helping out the uh, helping out the channel. So any tier on Patreon or tier two or higher right here on YouTube by hitting the join button right below the video. Also, as always, keep your eye open because I will be making an announcement very soon about the new book series that I will be releasing this year. So that's going to be great. Keep an eye out for that. And I have a podcast on Spotify. You can find these videos now on Spotify. Just go to Dawn of the New Earth. So if you have a Spotify account, follow me there. And let's help us uh, expand into all different platforms. And it's also easier to sometimes listen to these videos or, or watch them on, on that pl platform. It can be more convenient sometimes. So check me out there. As always, there's scammers in the comments pretending to be me, saying to join my WhatsApp, join my Telegram. Don't fall for it. That's not me. I don't have a WhatsApp. I don't have a Telegram. Also, there are people and groups out there who don't like me and don't like what we're doing, and they're spreading a lot of misinformation and disinformation and craziness in general. So just don't fall for the BS. Use logic and reason. All right. Here we go, my friends. Today, we are talking about, is Earth actually purgatory? Why are you here? So what is the concept of purgatory? So like I said, this has to do with a lot of different views throughout history. Purgatory really comes to us uh, in, a, in a more explicit sense in Catholicism, where purgatory is sort of a spiritual waiting room. So where heaven is a reward and hell is a punishment, Purgatory is neither reward nor punishment, it's waiting. And that's something that's critical to know because someone in the chat said, why am I being punished and sent to purgatory? Well, purgatory technically isn't a punishment. It is a place of a spiritual purification. I forget who it was, but someone in the chat said it's like a spiritual detox center. 
or a soul detox center. And that's a really good way to look at it. So essentially for Catholicism, when someone passes, their soul will either go to heaven or hell or purgatory. Now, purgatory is reserved for those who haven't uh, done any or, or repented for any major sins that would warrant them going to hell, but they have what's known as venial sins or more minor sins. So, the place of purgatory is reserved for those who have committed minor sins or for those who have perhaps repented of all their sins, but the effects of those sins are still lingering. So it's like a detox center where those effects can begin to dissipate. So according to that system in Catholicism, even if you have asked for forgiveness of your sins, the effects of the sins can still linger. And one way to look at this is sort of like an addict. If you're addicted to something, let's say you're very addicted to a certain kind of narcotic. If you're very addicted, you can, you can say, hey, I'm going to give up this narcotic. I'm never going to do it again. But the effects on its body, on your body, the effect it has on your body are still there. And you're still going to need to go to a detox center to be able to get through the withdrawals and all the effects that it has on your body as your system tries to re-regulate itself. Come back to regulation. Similar thing here when it has to do with the soul, just with uh, sins. And this is how Catholicism in general, in very general terms, views purgatory. It's a place that one goes to when one dies. It's like a spiritual waiting room or a spiritual detox center. People on earth can pray for people in purgatory to help them get through it better, get through it faster. So, but the question is here, right? Does it have a different meaning? And so if we took a look at more spiritual rather than strictly religious, more spiritual interpretations of purgatory, uh, particularly in the new age, it's looked at in a couple different ways. Some people look at it as a training ground where one is learning lessons so that they will be able to ascend to a higher plane of existence. So they look at earth as a school or a training ground where one is learning certain lessons to ascend to a higher plane of existence. Others look at it in the more, you know, more similar to the Catholic, uh, the Catholic view where it has to do with uh, not a repentance or a restitution, but more like a, it has to do with karma for a lot of new agers, right? So you have uh, accumulated some bad karma in your past life. And so you are now on earth working through that karma that you have accumulated. Um, other people believe that it is uh, possibly you, you did some terrible things on another planet in your past life and are so now and, and are now sentenced to purgatory for this lifetime on earth. So these ideas are interesting. We're going to be taking a look at them to see if they are in fact true. But they also mirror some ancient esoteric ideas as well. Like in Gnosticism, we talk about Gnosticism a lot. Gnosticism looked at earth as being a place where the soul is trapped. And the only way that the soul can escape is through attaining gnosis or knowledge. And when a soul attains gnosis or knowledge, it can ascend to the true divine realm and escape the material realm. So you have a lot of different ideas about it, but they have a similar theme of a temporary waiting place or a temporary place where some process is occurring before moving on to another phase or another place. So let's take a look at this. Let's see if this is real, what's going on, and um, what this has to do with our life and your life and why you are here, why you are here right now. So to do this, I'm going to pull up this article as usual. And this article is on medium.com and it's written by Ari Love. I really like Ari. I don't agree with everything that Ari says, but I really like a lot of what Ari shares. And I encourage Ari to start a YouTube channel. Ari should start a YouTube channel. If they don't already, maybe they do, but they do. I like what they share. I like what they talk about. And this particular article is called, Could We Be in Purgatory? Part 1. And so I'm going to be reading a few quotes and excerpts from this article. So if you like some of the quotes that we read, 
go give Ari a follow on medium.com. You know, leave a comment, leave a like or something like that. So what Ari says here, and the reason why we, I want to take a look at Ari's, some of Ari's writing is because Ari comes from a very spiritualist new age perspective, but they also have some background in Christianity as well. So it's interesting to get this idea so that we can discuss these ideas and see what some people believe and see if they're true or not. So Ari starts off by saying, being raised as a Christian, which is really interesting. I did not know that Ari was raised as a Christian. I was raised as a Christian. Did not have a good time with that. Uh, um, so I don't know. It seems like Ari had a more positive experience. I don't know if that's true, but they have integrated, it seems, the Christian perspective into their lifestyle. But seemingly in a more, I don't know. I, I just don't know if they would refer, refer to themselves as a Christian or not. Who knows? I'm not sure. But nonetheless, they were raised as a Christian. So Ari says, being raised as a Christian, I've read the scriptures thousands of times. I've been rereading the Bible and decided to start with Genesis chapter 1. As I read verse 3, I lingered, and after a few moments, I revisited the scriptures and realized a few things that I hadn't noticed before. In reading the Bible, in Genesis, near the beginning, it says, The darkness was over the surface of the deep. And Ari says, I couldn't help but wonder why God would create the heavens and the earth in darkness. I sat with this for a few days, hoping to understand the true meaning behind the verse. So as always, you, you know from my position is that the Bible is not the perfect inerrant word of God. The Bible is a collection of archetypal stories that we can interpret in various ways and glean stories and lessons from them. So I don't literally believe that God created the earth in darkness. I don't know if Ari does or not, um, but Ari is basically trying to figure out why it says this in the Bible. And Ari says, that led me down a rabbit hole. The first thing I thought was that we are in what Catholics refer to as purgatory. I know little about Catholicism, but I'm somewhat familiar with their belief in purgatory. Essentially, purgatory means to cleanse or purify. Is it just me, or does that sound similar to what we are experiencing on Earth? So Ari is like, okay, why does it say that God created the Earth in darkness? And she comes to the conclusion, hey, maybe it's because we're in purgatory. I know that purgatory is about being cleansed or purifying oneself. And she's saying, doesn't that seem kind of like what we're going through on Earth? Does it seem like that to you? Um, and by the way, just to make this clear, uh, I was raised a born-again Christian, not Catholic. We didn't believe in purgatory. So in, in the type of Christianity that I was raised in, there was just heaven and hell. There was no purgatory. That's an idea that's found in Catholicism. But we're exploring that now. That doesn't really matter. I'm just telling you because I feel like it. So Ari says, could Catholics be correct in their belief in purgatory? According to the downloads I'm receiving, the answer is yes, but not in the way they think. And this is something that I want to point out that most of what Ari shares is what she gets or what she calls getting downloads. And I think this is both a combination of just like intuitive flashes or she even talks about talking with her spirit team or something like that. So I just want to be clear. I like a lot of what Ari writes. I like what a lot of what Ari expresses. I don't agree with all of it. And one of the things here is that we have to understand is that when we get intuitive insights about reality, we always have to examine them with logic and reason. Just because we get an intuitive insight about existence doesn't mean that it's actually true. So if we get the intuitive insight that um, Earth is purgatory, it doesn't mean 100% for sure that Earth is purgatory. So like, for example, let's say that you have the intuition Earth is hell. Like, you just, oh, wow, I just received a download. I believe earth is hell. It feels like earth is hell. And I look around and it seems very hellish. Well, one has to be careful because intuition deals with the realm of the unconscious. You're really plugged into the unconscious domain, having to do with the right hemispheric functions of the brain that deal with meaning and symbolism. And so there's a lot of power in that, but it doesn't communicate in the logical analytical way of the left brain processes. It communicates in meaning and symbolism. So when you sometimes get these intuitions or downloads, 
they come in intuitive archetypal symbolic form. So for example, if you get the intuitive flash that Earth is hell, it may not literally mean that Earth is hell. You may be presented with that archetypal theme that has a deeper meaning to it. So for example, we can look around and realize that Earth has become hellish because of the way humanity has collectively chosen to create the Earth and direct its development and evolution. So you see, there's a big difference between believing Earth is literally hell or Earth is hellish because of the choices that we have made. Two very distinct differences, and it's important to distinguish them because that shapes our actions. If Earth is just hell because some god created it, oh shit, we need to escape. However, on the flip side, if Earth is simply hellish because of our collective decisions, then we realize that the only way to escape is to transform it into something better. So, long story short, what I'm trying to say is when one has a, a download or an intuitive flash or is having a communication with uh, an intelligence or something, these ideas are not always communicated in straightforward, logical, analytical ways. They're often communicated in symbolic and archetypal form. And so it's important not to just be like, oh, I feel like Earth is hell, so Earth is hell. It, it, it's better what the process sh should entail is going, okay, I had this intuition. Now let me examine it with logic and reason. Let's see if it fits in with how I understand reality to operate. Let's see how it fits in with what we know about reality to, you know, with the uh, aspects that we know reality to be true. Does it conflict with anything? Um, how, how does this fit into the fundamental grounding principles of existence? Does it violate any laws of logic? Does it violate any laws of reason? You want to uh, look and see, is this, can I tease out some symbolic meaning here? It's like when you have a dream. When you have a dream, your dreams for the most part aren't literally true. They're symbolic for something. If you have a dream that there's a, of a crying child in your, in your, uh, in your dream, that likely has to do with perhaps you don't, you're not nurturing, you need to nurture your inner child more. You need more play in your life or something like that. You don't want to start being like, oh, wow, I had a crying child in my dream. So maybe I have to be careful. I don't, you know, uh, you know, f find any crying children. And it's, it's not predicting the future. So I'm trying to say it doesn't necessarily reflect what reality is. Uh, if you have a dream about your, your mother. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to do with your actual mother. It can mean that you need more nurture and care in your life. If you dream about a doctor, uh, it might need, mean that you need to focus more on internal health and internal care. You need care in your life. You see, these are archetypal patterns. The archetype of care, the archetype of nurture, the archetype of play and innocence. And they are being clothed in various ways that your mind is symbolically interpreting. So anyway... We just, it's always important. The reason why I emphasize this is because this is the big issue that a lot of New Agers and spiritualists find themselves in, in that they are now in a world that is completely and totally intuitive, and they have uh, removed the step of rationally processing the information. And, and this leads to a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of crazy ideas. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's, let's continue and explore this idea. Is Earth actually a purgatory? So. Ari says, the more I dig into other religions, the more I realize that all are somewhat accurate. Think about it. We incarnate on earth, unconscious, but are to awaken, heal, and rediscover ourselves. And this eventually leads to spiritual enlightenment. We experience tremendous suffering, but are supposed to experience an ego death to become the best, purest, purest versions of ourselves. So all of this is more or less true. And why is all of this more or less true? Well, we know that reality is a system of self-transforming energy patterns. And every single one of us as a soul is a complete collection of these self-transforming energy patterns or frequency patterns. These frequency patterns interact with each other and form frequency functions. These frequency functions interact and form higher structures. And essentially, our minds are evolving and transforming. You can think of it like a Rubik's Cube kind of moving around trying to solve itself. Obviously, that's a fairly simplistic metaphor. But essentially, reality is about uh, transformation and evolution and growth on one end of the spectrum. It's not just about that. It's also about experiencing and enjoying life. 
uh, because the two are actually connected. But uh, so so what Ari is, say, uh, is saying is is more or less on the right track here. We incarnate on Earth unconscious, but are to awaken, heal, and rediscover ourselves, and this eventually leads to spiritual enlightenment. That's right. And but but see, we we can know this by understanding how reality operates on a mathematical level, not because you know no no spirit guide has to tell us this. For example, we can understand how reality works in terms of energy patterns and how energy transforms and how uh, the rules of logic and reason dictate that reality must uh, obey. And that is entailed in existence. So, uh, but, but yeah, that, that's exactly right. So Ari says, what if Earth was created as a school to help us rehabilitate ourselves? All right, so this is an interesting idea. What if Earth was created as a school to rehabilitate ourselves? Now we'll see that this is it's in the right ballpark. It's in, we have to be careful with new age spirituality. We don't want new age spirituality to become a new religion. And religions arose for many different reasons. But a, one of the big damaging effects that religion has, or the reason why religion has become so damaging, is because the stories that are taught in religion have been taken as literally true when they're supposed to be symbolic and metaphorical and allegorical. They're symbols, not literal. So when we hear something like, what if Earth was created as a school to help us rehabilitate ourselves? That is true in a story format. It's not literally true. Or, at the very least, we can't know for sure that it is literally true. But we can see that it's on the right track for symbolically describing what Earth actually is. Because we're going to explain what Earth actually is, what Earth really is. And we'll see this idea of Earth being purgatory is kind of a story version of what Earth actually is. So Ari says, what if Earth was created as a school to help us rehabilitate ourselves? Wouldn't that explain all the pain and anguish? Perhaps this was a better option than the alternative. Over the years, I've discovered that pain and suffering are ma monumental in transforming us into the best versions of ourselves. If we don't experience suffering, we cannot mature or develop because pain leads to salvation. The main objective is to conquer the darkness and find the light within. We accomplish this by transmuting darkness into light and pain into power through self-purification. Rehabilitation leads to an ego death and an ego death leads to enlightenment. So there's some good points in here. There are some points that I, I don't agree with. So let's take a look at this. So Ari says, over the years, I've discovered that pain and suffering are monumental in transforming us into the best versions of ourselves. That is true to a certain degree. Pain and suffering can be used as catalysts and transforming us into the best versions of ourselves. It's kind of like the Nietzschean quote of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's the Nietzschean idea of overcoming adversity. But here's the problem. Is that this world exists in a state of excess suffering where that is detrimental to growth. So the problem with, with, with looking at it this way is if we think, oh, well, we if we believe, okay, well, we just exist in a rehabilitation center. And so all the pain and suffering that's occurring, well, that's just part of the process. We don't really want to get into that mindset because when we get into that mindset, then we don't, that tends to make us not want to make moves to change things because we see it as being part of the process. Like, oh, well, we are in a rehabilitative center and all the pain and suffering that's occurring all across the world, that's just part of it. People are learning lessons. You see, uh, that's not a good mindset to have because now one isn't doing, doing anything to make the world a better place. It leads to complacency. So the main thing to realize here, or one of the main things to realize here, is that this isn't something that is just happening to us. This is a process that we are. We are this process. 
And once we become conscious of the fact that we are the process, we can change and transform the process. So for example, Ari says that pain and suffering is required for transformation. That is true to a certain extent. There is an excess of unnecessary suffering in the world. And the difference in understanding this is, is like this. So if you are just going through a hellish experience with all this pain, with all this suffering, with all this, you know, anguish that you have to endure, can some people use that to become a strong and resilient person? Yeah, some people in the face of adversity like that overcome and transform and become strong individuals. But guess what? There's going to be a ton of trauma that they're going to have to deal with for the rest of their life. And for a lot of people, the pain and suffering doesn't result in them becoming a better person. The pain and suffering just results in pain and suffering. Medical conditions they have to deal with for the rest of their lives, psychological conditions that they'll have to continuously get therapy for. So it's not always the case. It can be. It can be a catalyst for transformation, but it's not always the case. But now consider it. Consider a different scenario. Consider what happens when you play a video game. Well, when you play a video game, there is a certain amount of pain and suffering involved in the game. But, the, but in the context of a game, it's enjoyable. And what I mean by pain and suffering in the context of a game, I mean, if you play a game, games can be frustrating. You can even get very mad and angry as you play a game. You probably should, you know, maybe have some anger issues if you get too mad, but look into that maybe if you're, if you're, if you're raging too hard. But you, you can get frustrated if you, you know, keep trying a level again and again. As you try and beat a level again and again and again, it gets, it's hard. It gets frustrating. You can get, you can get mad. You can get annoyed. But when you beat the level, that's what makes it satisfying. And the point here to understand is that we can have challenges and adversities where it's actually an enjoyable process. And so that's the difference is we want to create a world where there's not pain and suffering in the form of like violence and hatred and lots of words that I can't say on YouTube, but you get the idea. Lots of actual suffering. We can transform the world into a place where it's like a game that is enjoyable, where there is still challenges to overcome and adversity to overcome, but it's not in the form of unnecessary suffering. They are challenges and it becomes fun. And that's the point. Reality is supposed to be fun at a certain point, at a certain point, which we're trying to get humanity to. Reality is supposed to be enjoyable. I mean, you can enjoy life for more or less at, at any level you're at if you have the right mindset to a certain degree. There are some situations that are just terrible. But you understand what I'm saying is that we can reshape the world. So do you see the, the big difference in thinking like, oh, well, the earth was just created like some God out there created earth as a rehabilitation center. So everything, despite all the suffering and and death, that's supposed to happen. That's part of the process. That's part of the detoxification process. That's not a good attitude to have because now you're not going to change. Rather, what, it, what one should understand is we are on Earth and Earth is a place for learning and transformation and growth. But we ourselves, as the conscious nodes of Earth, are the ones who shape that process so we can create that process into a infinitely better experience. So when we realize that it's not something that's set in stone by some creator God, but rather it is an evolving process that we are, we can begin to shift it. When we, we become conscious of the process, we can shift and change the process. So we can create a new earth that does not have this excess of pain and suffering, but still has challenges, but challenges that can be enjoyed. So. Uh, Ari continues by saying, if this life experience or simulation was created for rehabilitation purposes, it makes sense that darkness has reigned for eons. So, yeah, I, I think that it's important to understand that we are the creators. 
it, 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 be, it starts to become a little dangerous when one starts thinking of external beings or external entities or we were created or the earth was created. We are the creators. We are the destroyers. We are the transformers. We are the gods of this earth. We are the second coming of Christ. We are here to build the kingdom of heaven right here and right now. That's what we are here to do. And when we understand that and acknowledge it and step into it, we will make it happen. Otherwise, we're just going to be sitting around twiddling, twiddling our thumbs while humanity massacres each other. And that's not good. We want to step into our power and create a nurturing world of abundance, care, and reason. So, Ari says, if this life experience or simulation was created for rehabilitation purposes, it makes sense that darkness has reigned for eons. In Psalm 51.5, it says, Indeed, I was guilty when I was born. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. This scripture never made sense to me. How can an innocent newborn be a sinner? After much thought, it clicked. An infant can only be a sinner when born if they committed a transgression in a previous life or in another reality or another planet. We carry our transgressions and karma from an alternate reality to earth. That's why we are born in sin and are surrounded by wickedness. So, a couple things to note here. So Ari looks at this Bible verse, Psalm 51.5, that says, I was guilty when I was born. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. And Ari is going, well, how can a newborn child be a sinner? And Ari comes to the conclusion, well, they must have done something wrong in a previous life, in some other reality, or some other planet. Well, first of all, I want, I want to say the, the Christian interpretation of this is that all individuals are immediately born and even conceived with original sin. All life has original sin. All human life has original sin. And the, what is original sin? It's Adam and Eve eating the god darn apple. God just really doesn't like apples. I know it wasn't actually an apple. I know. We don't know what fruit it actually was. I know. I'm just saying. But yes, it's that ridiculous. All humans are sinful automatically because of the original sin committed by Adam and Eve. So that means if even a human being was utterly, totally perfect, never did a single thing wrong, uh, they would be considered sinful because of eating from the tree of knowledge. Funny how knowledge is sinful, isn't it? Condemns humanity for the rest of time for just a little knowledge. So, you can see, so that's the Christian interpretation. But Ari is saying, okay, well, maybe it's because someone did something wrong in a previous life. So Ari says, here's what I'm interpreting so far. From wherever we originated, some, not all of us, committed some sort of unlawful act. This would have occurred on our respective planets. When we faced the courts, we were given a couple of options. We would face punishment. It varies. Or we could voluntarily sign up for a simulated rehabilitation experiment. Most of us agreed because it seemed a better option. So according to Ari, in a previous life on another planet, we did something wrong. And the courts of that planet gave us a couple of options. We could be punished or we could voluntarily choose for a simulated rehabilitation experiment. And that is what Earth is. In, according to this interpretation of, of Ari. So, again, I don't find this to be a very healthy interpretation. I believe, as usual, this is an archetypal and symbolic. It's, it's, it's very easy to understand why this sort of archetypal download would happen. Earth is a place for transformation and growth. And so when one is dealing with archetypes and symbolism, this is going to be interpreted as uh, at, through the symbols of things like purgatory and rehabilitation and schools, etc. But is it is it literally any of these things? Earth isn't literally purgatory. It's not it's not even literally a school. When we say it's a school, that's pretty close to what it is. But of course, it, it isn't literally a school. It's like it is it 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 it, it follows the archetypal pattern that schools represent in learning and growth and transformation. But this, this way of interpreting it literally can be dangerous because 
what's happening now, and this is a problem with karma in general, not just this interpretation, but karma in general, well, what does this naturally lead to? It leads to if some, you see something bad happening to someone, oh, well, they must have robbed the bank on another planet in their last life. Guess they're getting what they deserve. They're being, they're being re rehabilitated or whatever. You see what I'm saying is that it, it's, it's, the, it's the idea of being born sinful. It's, that, it's the Christian idea of being born into sin, but on another level. And we have to be careful with New Age spirituality because New Age spirituality often reflects a lot of Christian ideals just in different words. Like, instead of, ha oh, trust in, uh, have faith in God, it's, oh, trust in the universe. And uh, th th there's a lot of, um, I forget all of them right now, but, but there's a lot of ideas in New Age spirituality, like having to do with, you know, believe in the universe, have trust in the universe, the universe will provide and your all, all these things that are just uh, um you know christianity repackaged in in new words and we have to be very very careful of that so understanding this in a literal way leads to problems now to ari's benefit ari says please know that not all of us are participating because of an un unlawful act some are here to experience life as a human. Others are assisting with the ascension. And a few are here because if they complete this experiment, they can ascend beyond the fifth and sixth dimensions. This simulation over time has become useful to many for various reasons. However, according to the information I'm receiving, planet Earth was created for rehabilitation purposes. It is purgatory. Every planet, galaxy, and dimension is watching planet Earth. You may not realize this, but this is a huge deal. Data is being collected. So Ari says that not all of us are participating because of an unlawful act. Some are here to experience life as being human, others to assist with the ascension. However, predominantly, Ari says, from the information that she's receiving, planet Earth was created for rehabilitation purposes that it is purgatory. Uh, so once again, this is something that I think is archetypal. It's not literal. Earth was not literally created for uh, a purpose of, of being a purgatory now or rehabilitation center. Uh, I'm going to explain exactly what, what Earth is in just a moment. But I just want to address this one other thing that Ari says, where she says every planet, galaxy, and dimension is watching planet Earth. Uh, th this, I think, is possible. I think that this is possible. I think that there are entities that are higher than humanity, particularly in our system, what we call sub-network minds, that are interested in the development of human souls because the development of human souls are basically centers of energy or frequency patterns that can be uh, useful in many ways. So yes, I do believe that there are uh, higher minds evolved minds, sub-network minds that are interested in the evolution and the development of the uh, eternal minds and souls or Zetas associated with planet Earth. Uh, but that, that aside, that's more of an aside. The idea here where uh, Ari says that the simulation over time has been useful for many reasons, but ultimately Earth was created for rehabilitation purposes. It's purgatory. Like I said, this is... Um, a mindset that I think is is not the best to have because ultimately what we have to say when it comes to this kind of stuff is, okay, so look, is Earth literally a purgatory? Was it created by some beings for souls that, cr that did something wrong on some other planet? Is that what Earth is literally for? We can't say, it's possible. So if we if we're being completely like cards on the table, 100% objective about this, it is possible that that is true. But we can't say for sure or to even even to any high degree of accuracy that that's true. That's purely speculative. It doesn't matter if you're having intuitive flashes or beings telling you these things or something like that. Uh, that in itself is not good enough to be able to say that one thing is one way or another. Those beings could be manipulating you. It could be archetypal imagery that's supposed to be symbolic and not literal. There are many different things that one has to account for. 
And so we have to examine the metaphysical domain with more rigor than we scientifically examine the physical domain. And that's what we do in our system of meta-rationalism. We examine the metaphysical domain in a rational way. So we know that reality is a self-transforming system of frequency patterns, creating higher degrees of frequency functions and greater complexity. And each one of us is an eternal soul, which is a complete set of uh, waveforms that contribute to the evolution of our own personal internal frequency functions. And so we are on a path of evolution and transformation and growth. And so what are what what is what is planet Earth? What is what is planet Earth? Well, let, let's explain this. Let me explain to you, like how Earth is like purgatory while why it feels like it could be purgatory but not literally purgatory why it feels like it could be purgatory okay so essentially what a planet is it's it's like a seed a planet is like a seed a seed nurtures something for something higher than it to grow and sprout and bloom so a planet is like a seed that is there to for many different stages just like as a plant has many different stages you have a you have a seed that then becomes the sprout that then becomes, um, you know, uh, develops some blooms and the flower, and then it develops its own seeds, etc. But it all starts with the seed, and there's different stages in its development. Ultimately, it's a dialectical process of development. So planets, what they do, and um, I'm going to try and condense this down because we don't have a lot of time here, but planets are a focal point of the dialectic. They allow the dialectic to play out in a subsystem. And so what this means is that evolution and transformation is more compactified. It's more localized. And different processes can occur on a planet than somewhere else. There's, you know, a planet is a certain distance from a star that uh, ends up, you know, uh, being oriented in such a way that it can develop an atmosphere. All these different conditions have to occur for avatars or life forms to appear on Earth. And as avatars begin to develop and evolve and appear on Earth, we as eternal minds, as Zetas, can interface with these avatars and experience a localized domain of space-time, the physical world. So we are in this system of basically like evolution and growth and transformation. And we're systems of energy. And we're interfacing with bodies. And these bodies are facilitating our growth and our evolution. And so... In that sense, yes, it's like it, it is like a school because we are interfacing and learning and growing. We could also say, even more accurately, that it's a neural network. It's a Zetic neural network or a mental neural network where each and every one of us are nodes in this neural network. And each lifetime is about acquiring training data. And every time we acquire training data, this goes to the uh, optimization of our internal frequency functions to increased levels of evolution. So we're gathering data, training data, as we have life experiences and grow and learn on Earth. And as we grow and learn and experience on Earth, uh, so, you know, it, it, we're all a community, we're all a collective, and so society starts to emerge. And because societies start to emerge, you have to realize that the Earth is a is a limited, it's, it's a finite system. Earth is a finite system. There's a finite amount of resources, uh, there's a finite amount of area and it forces essentially humanity to have to work together. Humanity has to learn to work together or it will eventually destroy itself or form a slave framework. So it either, either will destroy itself or form a slave framework or create a united planetary civilization, which is what we're trying to get humanity to do right now. So you can see how earth is a developmental process it facilitates development and this developmental process can be very difficult in the beginning it's just about uh, developing an avatar that can support self-awareness like a bicameral brain two-chambered hemispheric uh, brain that that has uh, left brain associated functions interacting in such a way where self-consciousness can arise whatever in the beginning stages of evolution it's just a bloody mess it's species against species and extinction and it's just a violent mess and so that's the phase that had to occur for these avatars to develop and become the dominant avatar so we have developed and become the dominant avatar and gone through this bloody phase of of evolution and growth uh but we didn't want to stay there right we don't want to just stay in a state of 
living animalistically and just dog eat dog like that. So we started developing society, you know, tribes and groups and societies. And so we form some level of society and culture and sophistication to some degree, but we're still very much divided. We have pockets of human beings that are all competing with each other. So you have, you know, my God versus your God and my nation versus your nation, my flag versus your flag. And you look at earth and you can look at the globe and you see all the borders that have been drawn around the earth and indications of our tendency to want to uh, partition things into what is our, what is mine and not yours. So we we're now in this state of, uh, uh, of evolution where we need to transcend that we need to transcend that and realize that we are all interconnected and form a united system. And this is through attaining all awareness. Self-awareness is what got us partitioned. All awareness, which is what we're trying to get humanity to, will bring us to a level where we're all interconnected and realizing that we're one, and that will bring us to a teleocratic planetary civilization. So do you see how there's different stages and different levels? Stage one was just a bloody violent mess of evolution and uh, has got us to the point where it's still a violent, bloody mess, but we have self-awareness. We're trying to get humanity to stage two, where it's interconnected, and we still have challenges, but the challenges are done in a way that promotes growth and the maximizing the quality of life for every individual and the collective. When we're enjoying life, when we're thriving and not fighting with each other because we realize that we're all interconnected. And because of this, we begin to synchronize. So we're growing, we're learning, we're evolving. We've created a singular planetary civilization where we're all interacting harmoniously. And as we begin to interact harmoniously and synchronize more and more, what happens is we begin to form a sub-network mind. When we form a sub-network mind, this is a kind of collective mind or a group mind where we are still all individuals, but we exist within a network. And you can see the framework for this being laid out through the internet and social media. The internet and social media and smartphone devices are the framework for an emerging sub-network mind. Humanity just hasn't realized that that's what's slowly starting to emerge as a potentiality. Uh, but a sub-network mind after uh, a planetary civilization is formed and many years go by through cooperation, synchronization, and advancement in consciousness and technology, we begin to form a sub-network mind and form network consciousness. At a certain degree, we as minds, as souls, reach such a high level of evolution and development and synchronization that we no longer depend on physical bodies or the physical world. We are able through the frequencies Im embedded within us as souls, the frequency functions within us as Zetas, we are able to combine them together because we've become a synchronized network mind and create our own CFD or collective frequency domain, which is to put it in short, it's like creating our own dimension. We will have uh, reached such a level of optimization, growth, learning, evolution, and synchronization that we no longer have to associate with planet earth or the physical domain. We will create our own domain, our own dimension where we'll be, where we will be able to exist and inhabit in that plane of existence. Uh, this is the third phase, which we call holos independence, independence from the holos, the holos referring to the physical collective domain that we all inhabit. So with that in mind, I know that's that's kind of a lot and I had to sh make it very succinct. But I'm, the reason why I bring this up is because I'm I'm trying to get across what is actually happening and why symbolically it can be interpreted in another way. So, for example, symbolically, it can feel like let's say earth is hell why can it feel like earth is hell well because everyone's going around unaliving each other and it's a terrible place but we realize that's not true that's just part of the dialectical development phase that we find ourselves in but we can change that and it will only change when we change it also instead go okay well it doesn't feel like hell to me it feels like purgatory well why does it feel like purgatory well what is purgatory purgatory is a, a place of waiting where one has purified themselves of sin or negative karma or whatever, you then ascend to a higher plane. Well, you can understand that what's actually going on is that humanity needs to learn how to grow, learn, and synchronize together to such a degree that they have reached a level of their evolution and optimization that they form a sub-network mind and we create our own collective frequency domain our own CFD, and we're no longer, we ascend to another domain, another an immaterial domain. We, we 
ascend not literally because it's another dimension it's not up it's not up there it's just another domain it's another domain and so do you see how we have ascended to another plane to use it use like new age terminology so you see how it's there's similar how how one could inter if one is having intuitive flashes of this process that can feel like purgatory oh we have to be in a place for a while where a certain process happens then we go to a higher place where in actuality what that is symbolically the reason why that's com coming through symbolically is because the actual process is that we are all eternal minds zetas going through this process of evolution and, and evolving together here on earth and we have to learn how to work together we have to learn how to cooperate we have to learn how to create a new earth and after generations and, and and lifetimes doing this over and over and becoming synchronized and learning how to create uh, a new planetary civilization, then we will realize that we will have the power to establish our own CFD, our own collective frequency domain. So do you, you see the similarities, but it's very important to understand what's actually going on because the what you believe about reality is gonna change how you view things. For example, we're not here because we did something bad in the past, in our past life. We're here because we're at a particular stage in our evolution that requires us to work together to purge all of the unnecessary suffering that exists in the world. And we have to work to do that rather than just being like, ah, shit, well, I guess I did something bad. And uh, I guess I'm gonna wait until I'm done and go somewhere else. No, it's it now. It, you know, like I said, is it, can we say for sure with 100% certainty that, um, you know, other souls from other planets aren't being sent here as like punishment or something? No, or, or even purgatory or whatever. We can't say with 100% certainty that that's not true, but <laughs> a lot of things could be true. And having these ideas in our head can be detrimental. You see how they have a detrimental effect if one believes them. Oh, well, you must have done something bad or shit, I must have done something bad. And oh, well, this was just created as purgatory. I guess there's nothing we can do about it rather than understanding, oh, this is a process. We are evolving. We are transforming. We are part of this process. We are not only part of the process, but we are the process itself. We are the creators. We are the destroyers. We are the transformers. We are the gods of this earth, this realm, this reality, all things. We are the absolute incarnate manifest. So we are here to transform the world and we need to consciously, consciously realize that and understand it because it all begins in the mind. It's all an idea and all the bullshit that we have in the world right now, a lot of it has to do with religious ideas. And we don't want to start putting in other ideas in people's heads that limit their ability to transform the world and, and change things. So we want to be very, very clear about why Earth feels like it's a purgatory, but because it is a temporary phase. Earth is a temporary phase. So you could think of it kind of like purgatory, as purgatory is a temporary waiting area. Earth is a temporary phase where eventually we will attain uh, a subnetwork mind status and, and create a CFD. But it's up to us. That might not happen. We could be nuked tomorrow and we'd have to start all over again. Or a slave framework could develop. So it's not just a matter of like, oh, well, we just got to wait or get through. No, it's up to us. This is a game that we're not watching. We're not watching this game on TV. We're the players in the game. So we have to make sure that we're pushing towards creating a new world and a new earth. And that's that's just I, I the reason why I keep saying this over and over again is because that's one of the main reasons why Earth exists in such a terrible place that it is, is because everyone has a wrong uh, an idea that's pushing them towards not helping the Earth. You know, people who believe in Christianity is just like, oh, well, I just have to live until I die. So I can go to heaven. Why should I care about the Earth? Or uh, if you look at Buddhism, like, well, well, life is suffering. I just want to reach nirvana. Why should they care about the earth? Um, and even atheism, atheism, the idea that, well, well, everything is just random and meaningless. And when you die, there's just non-existence. So really, when you think about it, there isn't really a logically uh, strong reason to for transformation. So understanding that we are 
the process itself, becoming aware of itself as the process, is necessary to change the process. So you have the power to change the, life, change the world. Every single one of you watching this has the power to change the world. And it begins with you by changing your life first, changing how, you know, your growth, your evolution. So anyway, one thing that I want to say, though, again, um, I know I'm being kind of critical with some of these some of these ideas, but I do I do like Ari. I like Ari. I like her ideas. And I, I think that she should start a YouTube channel. Like I said, I'm not trying to be you know overly critical or harsh. I think that Ari is on a great, fantastic journey. And for the most part, I really like the ideas. Um, a lot of her stuff is geared towards helping create a new earth and things centered around, uh, you know, positive uh, development. So I, I like that a lot. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, my friends. And as always, please like and subscribe so that uh, we can get more people seeing this content. It's really important that people see this information and it helps wake up the world. Let's see. Uh, a reminder, we're having a members only video right after this. Today's members only video is what is science's blind spot? We're seeing that scientists are beginning to admit they have a huge blind spot that completely destroys their model and understanding of reality. So if you want to be a part of that uh, and support my channel and help me create bigger and better videos, support over on uh, patreon.com slash morgue official or tier two or higher on YouTube by hitting the join button right below this video. Remember, I have a new book series coming out very soon. So get hyped about that. More information to come. And check me out over on Spotify, Dawn of the New Earth. Go give me a follow there. And I want to thank everyone who supports. As always, remember, this isn't uh, this is not church. So don't feel obligated to support monetarily. You don't have to. But I want to support everyone who, or shout out everyone who supports, especially Renaissance Fairy Cassidy, Angela, the Halloween Mom, DB, Fashida, Enki, Nusalina, Masam, Eric, Christopher Smith, the Eternal Empire, and everyone else. And I do know I need to update this. So if your name's not on here, I'll be updating it very soon. But thank you all very much.